This is the only capital city in the world that has UNESCO biosphere. It's unique. The capital city is unique. It means that plants, animals and humans live together in harmony. And this week alone, most of the beaches in the bay here are closed because the Rings End sewage plant has dumped settled sewage that hasn't gone through the treatment process into the bay. And they've been forced to admit that they do this over 15 times a year. Experts in this video are talking about how even treated water will turn Dublin Bay and the North County Dublin coast into a dead sea. And after recent emissions by Irish water, they're realising that it's going to be even worse than this. They're about to build a sewage plant four times the size of Croke Park that will be doing the same thing to the host fishing grounds on the other side of Dublin Bay. So what can we do about it? The Irish government has just declared a climate emergency. So if the Irish government are for real about this, they need to put the brakes on the plant and clan shock. They can listen to the alternatives. Sewage can be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And Ireland could lead the world in this, you know? So please save the sea and our beautiful coast and sign the petition. So there's going to be a massive pipe coming under here from the sewage treatment plant. It's going to go out to that island there, just to the side of it and come off there. And this hut over here, this is a fishing village that supplies the city with all, all its fish. So they're going to, it's going to destroy all the fishing grounds just off here and poison all the fish. This is part of the great fight now at the moment to try and save this planet. You know, this is a part of it. There's banks run from there all the way up to fucking Wexford. And all inside is different ground than outside. So basically you're locking all, whatever comes out of that pipe, whatever comes out of it, is not going to go very far. It's going to stay there. There's very often trace elements of a lot of pharmaceutical drugs, um, antibiotics that people use a lot. If you take aside the implications of, you know, other chemicals from abattoirs and factories and hospitals and just what we're doing in our homes, you can't say that the, the waters are pure. In addition to bacteria and viruses in uh, water discharged, there can also be drug residues. These can be hormones, antibiotics, which are a bad thing in the environment, and other chemicals, plastic particles even. Because of the lagoon area, because of the fact that the water is staying there, rather than being washed out to sea, pollutants tend to accumulate rather than get diluted. So as a result, there's barium in the water, essentially metals. There's also phosphates already in the water. So we're already playing with fire in terms of where we're at. You know, the last thing we want to do is to make it worse. We're not going to make it better by pumping thousands of litres of treated sewage into the water. In Stromophilia, the entire uh, uh, sand bank lifted and we saw the result of that with all of the mussels and the razor shells that were deposited on um, Port Marnock Beach on the 5th of March 2018. Um, now, not only were razor shells deposited, but billions of bacteria, which we know as superbugs, uh, will have come up in the sand sludge as well. If there's a cut on a child's foot, that superbug can enter the child's system and we have a serious public health situation. This toxic plant is going to unite all people from all classes and ethnic backgrounds, okay? Because there are people in Port Marnock, people in Malahide, people in Sutton, the whole very middle class areas, and then you have people in Darndale and Belcamp and Kulak and Clunshock, very working class areas, and then you have a bunch of travellers who are the closest to the plant. A bunch of travellers who weren't notified, by the way, by the plant, and obviously this was strategic. So it was discriminative in its location in that sense, but we're all going to reap the benefits of this plant, you know? Um, I'm kind of enraged by this, actually. I was just saying to a friend of mine a while ago, every now and again a fight comes along that's really worth fighting for. 
and this is one of them vites, actually, because they're going to ruin the whole nature. Even if it was completely fresh water, it's still at full capacity, over two million litres a day. Up near the shores, at the estuaries, where the fresh water naturally comes out of rivers and things, you get a lot of the green seaweeds. Now they can cope with low saline, low salt conditions. They're adapted to it. But as soon as you start to go offshore, the seaweeds that grow deeper, these are the brown seaweeds and red seaweeds, you know, they're not adapted to low salinity at all. They're used to the saltiness of the deep sea. You have these vast kelp forests. So, you know, if you destroy the seaweeds and the environment in which they grow, you know, moving, moving them out of the Dublin Bay, you're going to end up with a desert down there. And when you have a desert down there, there's no life. Phytoplankton produces over 50% of the oxygen in the whole world. So every second breath of air that we take comes from this stuff. Yes, people focus on rainforests, and yes, they're crucially important, but nothing is important as, as phytoplankton. And this is living around the Irish coast, and in particular in the shallow areas like off the Port Marnock area. And if we mess with this, if we jeopardize this, if we pollute this, if we affect this, we are essentially killing our life source. We're killing the very oxygen that we breathe. You know, we all know about climate change and global warming, you know, and the damage that we're doing to the environment. You know, that is indisputable. And instead of, you know, pumping all this water into a place where it's not needed with the, um, the phosphates, the nitrates, you know, if it went inland into the boglands, you know, where those are useful to the plants and the plant communities there, into an innovative reed bed solution or something like that to regenerate forests, you know, plants in the heartlands, you know, Ireland could be setting a world-class example. Instead of having a system that requires a lot of electricity in order to make something less harmful or less problematic, we need to completely flip that on its head and begin looking at that as a resource and say we've got an abundance of biomass, which is captured carbon essentially from the atmosphere, given to us through our food and then into the waste material. So we've got that there as a resource to be captured and composted and reused on the land. We're land-based mammals. You know, we're not meant to shit in our rivers or in our seas. It's just, it's just not meant to happen. We need to be closing those cycles. As we look more at the circular economy, we need to recognise that that applies to all areas of life, including the area where we flush our toilets. We can sit back in years to come and say, look what little thing we did, that one change. We were forward thinking and many other countries have now followed our lead. And wouldn't that be a great legacy? If they don't do something about this, we're not going to do anything about anything, because I think this is classes in itself, but it's going to affect all people, you know? And uh, we should be angry. And there's times where you should be angry, and being angry is a positive thing. Now is the time to be angry. Let's not be walking on Port Marnock Beach in years to come, telling our kids and our grandkids that when we walked in these areas, you used to see shellfish, you used to see flatfish. It was amazing, it was full of life. Now it's just dead. I'm saying no. I'm not building it. I'm not going to destroy this part of my island. So Ireland, hear this call to stand proud and stand tall and stop Irish water from killing our sea. If our leaders don't listen, the last chance they're missing to save this green island